Welcome to the Edge of NFT podcast with your hosts, Jeff Kelly, Ethan Janney, and Josh Krieger. We aim to bring you not only the top 1% of what's going on with NFTs today, but what will stand the test of time. We explore the nuts and bolts and the business side, but also the human element of how NFTs are changing the way we interact with the things that we love. This podcast is for the futurists and dreamers, the disruptors and creators, the fans and connectors, and the makers and doers that are pumped about this ecosystem and driving where it goes next. Hey, it's your NFT LA with Pinar from Atlas Space. How's NFT LA for you today? Well, I'll be honest, it's uh, much better than I expected. Love that. Yeah, the crowd and the audience is amazing. Okay, that's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely a good thing. <laughs> I mean, we've been visiting all of these expos all around the world, but this place is something different. We're impressed. <laughs> Take that sound bite. <laughs> so tell us more about Atlas Space. Yeah, well, Atlas Space is a metaverse platform mm -hmm. for brands and enterprises. So most of the companies right now want to have their place on Metaverse. Yeah. So we've got a giant universe for them. We locate them. We have their private spaces and public spaces. Mm -hmm. And they can visit each other. They can go to common facilities like exhibition halls, event halls, yoga parks, executive you know, networking clubs. They can get private jet NFTs and access to very special limited islands. So this is how it goes on. So are you white labeling or are you having a space and then you're, uh, you know, uh, basically customizing it for brands and companies? Yeah, we've got a giant land, let's okay. say. We locate the companies. Mm -hmm. But for a company, we can give a white label URL okay. so that they can publish it on wherever they want and have access to only their land on their website. Okay, and are you doing it within your own, you're creating your own metaverse or are you bringing Atlas Space to other places as well? Uh, we are creating our own metaverse. Okay. We developed the platform. Uh, we are working with some partners and agencies that also communicate with companies. So they're like they are the organizer, and okay. we're giving the you know land and all the accessibility features. Amazing. And yeah. why do you think that's important and so needed right now? Well, because this is a huge potential yeah. for enterprises and the businesses. Yeah. Uh, there are major three uh, reasons for that. First of all, the companies create extra impossible revenue channels through Metaverse. Uh, they've got a huge engagement environment. Uh, second of all, uh, it reduces you know, HR costs by 40%, which is amazing. How? Because you know, when we're working remotely, now everybody is working remotely. Nobody sees each other. You, if you and me are colleagues, but if we're not on a video call, we don't see where we are. But Got it. we had this feeling in the office that created the team spirit uh, and the bonding and all these, you know, feeling like I belong to mm -hmm. community. That keeps a person happy and in a team and the company can thrive and the person can thrive. But when it's on remote, we're just looking at the screens. You know, that's it. We don't see any communities around. Yeah. Metaverse completes that feeling. I mean, of course, I think that's, that's so cool. And how do you make it more accessible? I mean, this is a big thing, right? Because as we move more into the workplaces, uh -huh. I'm sure accessibility comes up. Yeah. So the accessibility is, I mean, uh, we're accessible through web, most importantly. Uh, when we say metaverse, mostly VR comes to the mind. Mm, but yeah. VR is, uh, you know, immersive toy for us. Uh, if you have a computer, if you use a web browser, you just log into your system and boom, you're there. You can go to your office and say, okay, in NFTLA version uh, in the Metaverse platform, there is NFTLA today. I'll go visit there in a virtual with your 3D avatar mm -hmm. and then say, okay, at night there's a comedy show in the event hall. I'm going there with my friends. It's all happening in virtual. You only need your computer or a VR headset. So what are you excited about moving forward? Any partnerships that you could talk about? Uh, right now, we are making partnerships with a lot of, uh, let's say, blockchains, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of agencies. Agencies have got a broad uh, catalog of, let's say, companies and yeah. brands. And most of the brands don't even need these features and they just hear what we do and then they just you know, stick with us and I want my place. We're just telling them we're gonna launch in mid-May, but they say, 
I don't care if it's in beta, if it's in alpha, I don't care. I want what is existing right now and we're just inheriting them. So <laughs> you're launching in May. Yeah, uh, but we still have got the you know, users and the companies That's on the amazing. platform right now. How did you do that? What was the key to doing that? Because uh, in our past, we, uh, we come from architecture background. After then, we developed more than 40 enterprise scale virtual reality and augmented reality applications. So mm. we have always been working with enterprises. We know their needs, we know the language they speak, and we know how the you know, workflow happens in the companies. So we got all the you know, uh, algorithm, let's say. So uh, when we touch to the right need of them, they're just in. You're primed for this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and what are you doing differently than what we're seeing in other metaverses? Uh, we directly focus professional life. Okay. Yeah, and the, uh, uh, let's say, business social part and the business revenue part. So it's all about a person or a company mm -hmm. thriving uh, because we offer a lot of experience zones. Mm -hmm. These experiences can be uh, visited for, let's say, business contacts, business developments, or we got a lot of you know simulations, platforms, or communities that one can improve themselves inside. Mm -hmm. It's not like you know the physical world. You you have to go somewhere. You have to spend time, energy, to do something. But mm -hmm. in the metaverse, with a one click, yeah. you can you know you can just uh, un unlock all of the you know mysteries in your life, <laughs> in your career. Where do you see this going in a year from now? What will we be talking about? Okay, in a year from now we're going to have uh, a lot of companies in metaverse and because mm -hmm. right now people started having the feeling like conventional business a little bit like old school and this is the new version the <laughs> colorful version of business life you have to be there it's more dynamic it's dynamic. innovative yeah it's fun you yeah. know it's not like Boring. <laughs> I love this. If you're selling this, then I could see how people could want to <laughs> jump on. You're very welcome to have your spot in the metaverse. <laughs> I trust me. I'm trying to figure out where I should be, you know, taking land or buying. I haven't bought land in the metaverse yet. Oh well, there I think are I'm a lot late. Of... <laughs> I'm already late. We're early, but I'm late. Uh, you're not late for us. We're just going to release. So, okay, good to Yeah, know. keep in contact with us. <laughs> uh, so, what advice do you have for folks coming into the space um, and? you could say, into the metaverse space, NFT space? Uh, okay, uh, the advice is there's a lot happening right now. Yeah. Uh, the thing is there are fantastic things going on, but on the other hand, there are some dirty information mm -hmm. also going on. So one should you know, be careful about what they're actually doing or buying. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of companies, uh, a lot of individuals bought a lot of lands from here and there and this metaverse project. But most of the people right now come to us and ask, I bought this land, but what am I supposed to do now? Because mm, yeah. that platform didn't offer anything more than the land piece, these pixels and the, you know, that point. Uh, so we just explain, we don't know, but I mean, if you're in our platform, you can create revenues because a company will rent your space and you're going to have your revenue. So uh, this is one fact. Because of your relationship. So if I come in and just get a, a space or a piece of land in yeah. Atlas space, you're kind of doing the sales work. Yeah, that exactly. makes sense. Okay. Yeah, we're actually a B2B platform. So the companies buy or rent the land. Mm -hmm. Individuals can also buy the land and rent to the companies. I love so, that. So, yeah, get yeah. the revenues forever on. Will you be integrating NFTs in any way? Yes, exactly. Uh, we've got certain ways. Uh, first of all, companies can mint. We can mint the company's products, mm. NFTs. They can sell. Uh, we have got art galleries yep. inside the platform for individuals to visit because, you know, for art, it's hard to access if it's not on your space, mm -hmm. it's not in your city. You have to travel, a lot mm -hmm. of effort. Uh, in Metaverse, we get a lot of uh, lands. And on the other hand, this is the most fun part, I think. You got special keys and vehicles, like private jets, like a magic key uh, or a time portal. So these all have got limited NFTs. And if you get one of the NFTs, you can access to the private islands that they offer. So you have a time portal NFT. You can travel in time, you know. That would be amazing. <laughs> yeah. All right, where, where can people find out more uh, for the May launch? Uh, well, they can follow our Twitter or yeah. they can go to our website. It's atlas.space, our website. And our Twitter is the Atlas Space. Amazing. So yeah, keep in touch with us. <laughs>
Cheryl Lazar at NFTLA with Stephen Ball from Always Geeky Games. What's Hello. going on? Hi. Good. How, how are you doing? I'm good. You've been having fun. Yes, yes. LA is awesome. Enjoying you, it so far. It's my oh, first time here. So. Amazing. Welcome. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Uh, so tell us more about Always Geeky Games. Yeah, sure. Yeah, Always Geeky Games is a brand new uh, gaming company we founded last year. Mm -hmm. uh, we're a blockchain NFT gaming company. So we, we founded the company off of the back of a successful NFT project last mm -hmm. year. So we actually launched in uh, March last year. The original NFT project was called Voxies. And these are basically lots of uh, 3D voxel characters uh, that you can use in our game. Mm -hmm. So we have a game that's available now. It's currently in open beta. And the NFT characters you use in the game, you can play as your characters. It's a free to play, play to earn game. Uh, and as you're playing the game, you can earn NFTs, currency, uh, yeah, you can earn stuff in the game, basically. Cool. So you actually fulfilled some of your roadmap. Congratulations. Yes. Yeah, we actually have a game available and it's out there. Yeah. One of the first NFT projects to have that, so we're that's, super happy about that. That's great. It's very much needed. Uh, was it always a part of it to launch this game, or did that kind of develop? Yeah, exactly. That's a, that's a good question. So my, my background is uh, in gaming. So okay. before crypto, NFT, I was in traditional gaming. So I worked for Ubisoft, uh, Electronic Arts. So right before founding the company, I was working for Ubisoft and making a game in my spare time as a hobby, passion project. Uh, and that was, that was like two years prior to the mm -hmm. whole explosion of NFTs. Uh, and I was, I was kind of in crypto at the same time. So that was always the plan to make a game. But then when I started exploring NFTs, I found a real good uh, overlap between NFTs and the game we were making. So the game was always always planned. Uh, it just maybe wasn't planned with the NFTs in mind, but it was a perfect overlap when those two worlds collided, basically. That's great. What was the key to you building your community? Um, so the, the originally at the very beginning, um, the community didn't know about the game. So yeah. when we first launched the NFT project, the game was very much like a secret that was going to come later. So we had a very organic kind of community growth, people kind of discovering the project. We were very, very low key about yeah. stuff. We didn't kind of, you know, come out and hype stuff up at the beginning. So we had a very organic growth. And then people discovered the game. So it kind of like got leaked that we had a game that was in development. So people got super excited and we ended up kind of, there was an influx of um, people that were very interested in the game, very much into gaming, mm -hmm. but also exploring crypto. And so we kind of saw a very like organic kind of community growth around that. And we just kind of, you know, spread by word of mouth, kind of, you know, keeping stuff very low key. We didn't try to hype up stuff at the beginning. Yeah. So that was, I think that was the kind of key to our success is keeping stuff very, very grounded, very kind of, you know, realistic rather than, you know, going for the, going for the hype of like, you know, the NFT world mm. that everyone seems to be pushing these days. Well, yeah. Speaking of these days, do you think it's harder these days to do like what you, you did would have been more challenging now? Uh, yeah, I think so now. I think now, because there's much more spotlight on NFTs yeah. and the whole crypto world, and people are very critical about like every aspect of stuff, I feel like um, a lot of stuff that happened in the early days is very much more, um, there's much more focus on that now. People are you know, interested in all the KPIs, all of the roadmaps, all of the kind of you know, very specific schedule stuff. That um, a lot of stuff that was very, um, I kind of say, like you know, grassroots at the beginning, doesn't really appear as if it's the case now. People need to have come out of the box with like, you know, sponsors, branding, you know, the big kind of names. And the, and the, and the kind of projects that don't have that, I feel they, they kind of mm. get, you know, kind of almost like fall behind. Yeah, or lost. Yeah, get lost in the kind of your shuffle, basically. Unless there's like just some sort of virality to it. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. So with that, what have you learned in creating this successful brand through the NFT space? So one of the things we've learned and we've found that's uh, super successful, uh, during our growth and where we are today is just to make sure that we um, put community first. So since, since we are a gaming project, we are a gaming company, people are very interested in the product we're making, the product. Mm -hmm. they, they're always interested in you know, what tangibly they can, they can do with the NFTs, the utility. So we've found that for us, that's super successful, always making sure we're going back to the community, keeping them kind of you know, in mind in everything we're doing, uh, giving updates on stuff, giving them real tangible kind of um, uh, benefits, yeah. uh, rather than kind of you know, promising stuff that, you know, that we can't deliver, basically. Yeah. And what's coming up? I mean, you have this game. Yep. It's an 
Uh, but beta? Yeah, so currently our game is in For alpha. Uh, I'm like, which, which one no, do I use anymore? No, it's open beta. Yeah, yeah it's okay. open beta. That's what we're using. This is the, the alpha and this yeah. is in beta. Exactly. So we're in the open beta. So our game is currently available to play now. Yeah. People can, um, they can use their NFTs in our game. It's, it's all completely free to play as well. So we don't need to have NFTs to play our game. So we kind of looked at the, uh, mm. the Axie model where, you know, Axie Infinity, yeah. where they need to have NFTs to play. We decided we didn't want to do that from the beginning. We okay. wanted to onboard people as a free-to-play game so people can play with the NFTs or as free-to-play. And people can earn stuff in our game now. So when people are playing, they can earn uh, weapons, uh, armor, any items in the game, mm -hmm. and also our native currency that we have. So people can earn our currency in the game. And this all feeds into our marketplace. So people can go to our marketplace, sell the NFTs they have, use the currency they've earned in the game to, to buy items, to buy NFTs. So we've, we've built like a whole ecosystem around uh, everything we're building. But are those NFTs that you have built or that other people now provide to you? Uh, no, they're, they're, built, they're built by us, okay. but they're earned within the game. So our game is a tactical uh, yeah. fantasy game. Yeah. So it's kind of like a game of like chess, basically. Yeah. There's two players against each other. And because it's fantasy based, everything's like, you know, swords and yeah. shields, bows and arrows. So all the items people earn are the weapons in the game. So you're still trying to encourage people to buy the original NFT? I mean, th that's that's not necessarily a, I mean, it's, it's, it's a good goal. So in, in the game, if you have NFTs, you have better rewards. Okay. So there is benefits to having NFTs. You have a higher chance of loot. You earn more currency. So the, so the goal of most of the players is to build up to having a collection of NFTs, a team of characters. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's always like a, an end goal for the yeah. users. Uh, yeah. So what's coming up now that you have this? So on, on our roadmap coming soon, so we've currently launched the, uh, the multiplayer, mm -hmm. uh, the PVP. We have a whole uh, single player experience, the PV, uh, PVE mode that's coming. Uh, we have um, some, some leaderboard rankings, so we currently have one multiplayer mode, but we have a draft arena, an extreme arena coming up with, with um, prize pools, uh, rewards. Wow. Yeah, so we've got a lot of stuff planned. So what do you think about trends in this space? Like, where, where are things headed? So that's a super interesting question. So I don't, if you've seen any of the news around NFTs and gaming, you've seen like probably a big pushback from the traditional gaming world for uh, NFTs, blockchain, Yeah, crypto. why is that? Like, I just, I'm blown away by that and considering they were alienated from so much yeah, in terms of traditional entertainment and now they're doing the same thing to I, this. I think, so from my experience and from my gaming background, I think gamers are very um, um, turned off by change. Like, people don't like change too but much. But then they were change makers, like, this is where I'm... Yeah, so like, that's that's why yeah. I think it's super interesting, so because, like, you know, like the game industry went through change with <laughs> microtransactions, yeah. with uh, mobile gaming... Twitch. Yeah, all like, of the streaming. Yeah. So I think NFTs and gaming is a new change that the gaming industry is have to get, get used mm -hmm. to. Um, but one of the things, the mistakes that traditional uh, publishers and games companies have made is they've tried to take NFTs and crypto and just kind of shoehorn it into traditional gaming. And that isn't going to work. Like, I think the newer, the stuff that's coming in the future, the newer NFT games are going to have to adapt. Yeah. They're going to have to, like, evolve. The same way that microtransactions games evolve, like Fortnite, you know, all of those kind of free-to-play games. There needs to be like a new kind of uh, like gaming paradigm for mm -hmm. NFT games. Yeah. And I think that's what's going to happen in the coming like, you know, year, two years, etc. Yeah. As more traditional um, uh, companies realize that they can't just take crypto and NFT and stick it into a traditional game. It, it, was, it requires new types of gaming. Yeah. And I feel like these are new franchises. I mean, yeah. a company like yours could get acquired by one of the big gaming companies in the future. Yeah, and I think that's going to be a big in the space as well. I think some of the bigger publishers and bigger games companies have tried to like build their own thing. Mm -hmm. And I think now they're realizing that they have to look at experts that have been in the field for the last you know, two or three years mm -hmm. rather than trying to build stuff on their own. Same yeah. as they did with the, you know, when, when they acquired mobile studios. They, you know, big games companies didn't just stop making mobile games. They looked at the mobile producers and started acquiring them, started you know, building out their expertise. So what advice do you have for those entering this new world, this space? Uh, that's a good question. So I, I would say anyone that's uh, traditionally a gamer, traditionally like a games developer mm -hmm. that wants to get in, I think they first need to understand the space, mm -hmm. like understand exactly what is NFTs, what is crypto, you know, try to work through a lot of the kind of, you know, negativity that's around the space, a lot of the kind of, you know, negative press and really understand the kind of, you know, the, the, the technical details, the specifics yeah. and figure out how that applies to their craft, you mm -hmm. know, figure out how they can apply that to the gaming skills they have rather than just trying to you know, see it as um, an extension of making more money or an extension of the financial aspect, because yeah. that isn't always going to work in, in the gaming side. True. All right, well, check out Always Geeky Games right now. Great talking to you. Yes, thank you. Very nice to chat to you.
Hey, it's Cheryl Lazar at NFTLA with Clint Rodriguez from No Limits Crypto. What's going on? Oh, uh, how you doing? I'm good. How's NFTLA for you? Oh my God, it's been an incredible experience. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, the energy's been amazing just mm -hmm. to start, and it's really cool to be part of an emerging space, right? Yeah. So it's you know there where you go to a lot of conferences and you hear a lot about how what's going on right now. This conference has really been about the future. Yeah. And so it's been really interesting to see what everybody's bringing and um, and how hopeful everyone is for the future of right. everything as well. I mean, it's uh, it's it, everybody's here kind of uh, on a whim and a dream. So I think that's cool. Let's keep it going. <laughs> right. So yep. you are a video game designer, developer? Uh, so, I, uh, so I'm in insights and strategy at, uh, at, at, at the mobile game company Jam City. Yeah, okay. and, I, uh, and I actually help inform some of the strategy around uh, the play to earn game champions ascension. Amazing. Um, but um, I actually um, have um, a couple other side projects as well. Um, one that's called Hoops Association that I, uh, is a, a based around ticket concierge service to basketball games. Um, and uh, as well as some charity work uh, around LA um, in the ba in, around basketball. And then um, a, pet, uh, a pet project of my partner and mine called No Limits Crypto, which is in the adult space. So about as big of a divergence as you can get. Okay, we need to talk about this. What does it mean <laughs> it's in the adult space? So we have uh, developed a blockchain gated chat platform. Okay. And so, what we have is a collection of um, 10,000 NFTs mm -hmm. uh, split 5,000 and 5,000 yeah. into uh, doms and subs. <laughs> and we have some people <laughs> like in the background being like, okay, yes. And <laughs> Maybe possibly some consumers here of those <laughs> coming up soon. <laughs> uh, yes, and, and I've been having these reactions the entire conference. I love you. You're really creating something for everyone. Yes. I, um, I, I, you know, I really like um, making people feel good. In like, and I know that sounds very <laughs> creepy um, in this space, but um, like, I, I like people to um, enjoy themselves yeah. and, and, not, and not feel shame. I, there's yeah. so much shame that a lot of people feel mm, in trying yeah. to explore some of these things yeah. in, the, uh, in the real world. Yeah. And COVID especially really had a psychological effect on a lot of people. It's harder to go out, it's harder to meet people, it's harder to do so many things that we once really took for granted. Mm -hmm. And so what we, when, you know, my partner is, um, has always been on the cutting edge of culture. She was at Weed Map, she was at Playboy. She, okay. um, and so, um, and, uh, you know, we were talking about what was a way that we could help a community that both of us know um, kind of come out of COVID, meet each other, but also have fun in all honesty. And um, one of the big things there is security. And so it seemed like an easy fit with the blockchain. And so what, we've, what we have with this chat platform is um, when you mint a DOM or a sub, you are paired with someone from the other cohort. Okay. And um, you receive a private chat with them. We can't even read it. Okay. And, um, it is, uh, and it is locked completely to your NFT. So um, the goal there is to really allow people to um, meet each other <laughs> have fun kind of uh, exploring different fantasies together and not feel like they're going to get doxxed if they don't want to, yeah. um, not feel like they're going to get shamed if that's a problem, and also, you know, have something that represents them. The NFT is fun, it's, it's just a, it's, you know, every, every, the art is a 3D rigged model, so you can actually take um, any, whether you buy a dominant or submissive, you can take that character and drop them in any metaverse space. We're providing the model with it. And, um, Amazing. <laughs> and so uh, it's, um, it's been a really fun project in providing people something that they weren't really expecting. Yeah, but obviously needed, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think so. Um, long run, what we're hoping to do is have a, is, and, and, and um, you know, we're not putting this out on a large roadmap or anything because I'm really, really cognizant of the fact that there are a lot of projects in the space that promise the world and don't always reach that fruition. And I'm not saying that's even malicious. It's just mm -hmm. the best intentions. Yeah. And um, so we're starting with the chat, but long run, our goal is a metaverse environment where these avatars can be in, in a space, but also allow... Uh, the platform we're developing is blockchain gated, so we're hoping to allow adult performers 
in the space a safe place to also perform with either avatars, volumetric capture, or something like that. And they can own a blockchain gated room that's mm -hmm. theirs. Hmm. And, it, and it would allow them a safer environment than, they, than many of them currently have. Definitely. Oh, I feel like the uh, sex industry or porn industry has always been at the forefront of tech. Which is why it's like, it's surprising that you're actually one of the first, I mean, I'm sure there's probably a lot of projects out there I just don't know about, obviously. <laughs> I haven't done my research. Um, but that, you know, I, I'm not surprised that you're entering the space with that. I mean, if anything, it's needed. Plus, once again, that industry has always been at the forefront. Yeah, you know, like I see- streaming video <laughs> or all that. I mean, hello. Yeah, I mean, it's so true. I think, I think there's a certain, um, ease of adoption that yeah. adult leads to with tech, that um, people are more readily willing to jump in on it um, for whatever reason. And so I, you know, to see this space underserved um, was surprising. Mm, yeah. Um, and I think some people have tried, and I do think, I think, you know, again, best intentions. I think there's, I think there've been a variety, but there've also been, um, I think there's also been a lot of hesitancy because, um, you know, admittedly, there's been a couple projects in the space that have rugged people. And, yeah. and so it's, it's, I think it's really important to have, I think it's great that adults can lead the way on tech, but one of the things that we're really leaning in on and focusing on is actually education around the tech. We want to do series with people and uh, series with different adult performers or different things to have, um, to create some education. Yes, how to set up your wallet. Like yes. I could see like a porn star doing that. That is cool. So <laughs> got it. It's 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 yeah, and like and like it, 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 SFW, it, you know. Uh, Although well, it might be hard uh, to pay attention, you're supposed to pay attention. Uh, when exactly. You're doing no, we want to, we want to partner with these people. We're not looking <laughs> to have them perform off for the for the education, but uh, <laughs> um, but it's um, but no, there there's so many wonderful um, uh, people in the adult space who Definitely. actually are looking to break into this yeah. and we want to empower them as creators. And that's, um, you know, I was, um, I asked a question on a panel here yesterday um, because it was, uh, I, I don't remember the name of the panel, but it was, um, the panel was made up of a bunch of large companies, VC firms and, uh, and tech firms and a streaming service. And they were all talking about how blockchain was empowering creators. But what I heard were Five people with five hundred billion dollar budgets talking totally. about how yeah. the how they were empowering creators, and I and so I asked and I asked them all. I said, you know, how does someone break through all of that noise? And the general answer was that you can't stop capitalism, but that you, you it was that you can't stop capitalism, which fair, but that but that hopefully the tools are there through blockchain and through NFTs to allow these people greater exposure at least, who might not otherwise have it. And I guess I'm of the opinion we need to work a little harder than that. I'm not super degen, I have to admit. Like I'm 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 not like I'm not I, I, I I'm not particularly political one way or another. I'm not super, like, I don't particularly get into movements or anything like that, but I do think it's really important to empower creators. I come from an art background, my family, yeah. is, and so um, I appreciate what it means to have people who can't break into a space and really want to. And so I think we just have to work hard in this space to yeah. allow people to break in and continue to grow and kind of cut through the noise as larger brands enter as well. So where do you see the future of the adult entertainment industry as it relates to NFTs? Um, I think we're going to see a lot of metamorphosis, honestly. Um, but everything in the NFT space is moving towards utility. So mm -hmm. it's going to be what you're providing. It's going to be less, I think, I think, I think there's, go, there's always going to be room in the adult space for people who are taking beautiful pictures. Yeah. And, um, but I think what people are going to be looking for from NFTs are, is that smart contract utility. Mm -hmm. And the NFT is going to likely become more of a wrapper for the smart contract and what that's doing for you in a space, whether that's providing you with access, whether that's providing you with um, a greater metaverse, whether that's providing you with a game. Yeah. Um, I think we're gonna see 
that in the adult space and across the entire NFT space. So, so how can people get involved in what you're doing? Where should people go? Um, yeah, so our, uh, our website is uh, www.nolimitscrypto.com. Um, you're welcome to join, and uh, we're going to be releasing our chat in the next seven days. Okay. And, our, uh, and our, uh, we actually have an AI coming down the pipeline in the next two weeks where you can actually chat with an AI as well of your... A uh, separate cohort. Um, the DOM is coming first, and then we have a sub coming later. Um, and so um, you're welcome to join. We dropped a stealth mint um, at the beginning of NFTLA that um, we're like really stealthy because we have no presence whatsoever. I'm terrible at social media, um, and um, it's really a beta access. Um, and so you know, um, we like to joke we're working the kinks in. Um, <laughs> and so yeah. um, we're. Uh, we're trying to, you know, there's a lot to work out yeah. between the chat platform and the AI and all of that and growing to the larger metaverse. So um, we'd love for anyone to join us and try out the platform. Um, we're just trying to build a really fun community. Hey, I'm Shira Lazar at NFTLA with Cholo from Play It Ford DAO. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks, happy to be here. Yeah, and how is the conference going for you? Oh, it's amazing. You're, uh, we're meeting a lot of really different people mm -hmm. and a uh, project, and especially myself, I'm based in Singapore. Oh, so wow. coming here out of Asia, really to see a very different scene in the NFT uh, world. So um, in Asia, it's a lot more GameFi, a lot more yeah. gaming projects, but here it's a lot more content creation. And really the cool stuff coming out, like music, NFTs, and all that. Really, really uh, interesting and impressive stuff to see. Yeah, I think w we could work really well together, actually. Yeah. I think we could learn a lot from you all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, you could learn something from us, even yeah. though um, that market is just doing such great stuff right yeah, now. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, what is Play It Forward DAO? So, Play It Forward DAO is, uh, I would say it's a gaming guild um, as one of the key pillars of our business. So, a gaming guild essentially is um, us giving access to blockchain gaming mm -hmm. for people in... Uh, developing markets like the Philippines and Indonesia. We have about 3,000 players, give or take, um, across those two countries. Uh, they are enjoying five or six blockchain games. What we do is we lease them the NFT assets required to play those games, and then in return we get a rev share on any earnings they make. So we want to continue growing our community by bringing in more games, different games, and also um, entering new markets. So we're, we're pl making plans to uh, go start guilds in Vietnam and the rest of Asia as well. So pretty pretty exciting times for us. Do you think this is the future of helping build the economies there and the and like employment? Because I feel like there's limitations obviously in some of those areas. That's a that's a great question and I think that really hits to the core of what's made play to earn so popular mm -hmm. in the emerging world. It's because a lot of these players don't even have bank accounts. They don't have um, like savings accounts but they can play these games and they're earning crypto, they're earning um, real world money because we pay them out in fiat and that they can spend and that's real spending power. So we're basically play to earn and, and GameFi is onboarding a huge underserved and non-financially or financially excluded people. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel that's a huge wedge for crypto in accessing these, these uh, communities or even Fiat has had a, had trouble kind of penetrating. Yeah, but what what about the technology needed to then play, right? Yeah, it's still there's exactly. you still need that to access this Correct. opportunity. So that's that's why I think the the, the initial wave of, of blockchain games that were, were really popular are the ones that started in mobile. Mm, so because yeah. mobile penetration, especially in uh, Southeast Asia and emerging Asia, is very high. It's like eighty percent of yeah. people have mobile phones whereas most of them would not even have PCs or laptops. So that's why you're seeing this whole mobile play to earn revolution um, in, in the emerging um, economies. The hope is that these, these, these players make enough to then invest in better gaming infrastructure so that when the next wave of play to earn PC and AAA games come, they can also enjoy that, that wave of adoption and, and enrichment. Are you seeing any of those kind of success stories from your community? Uh, yeah, very much so. So we actually are now so we, our, our team now comprises of multiple types of contributors, I guess, for the DAO. We have people who do games research for us. We have um, streamers that constantly stream content and also help the games to um, up their engagement. And we also have uh, coaches that teach the other players, newer players, how to play the game and get better at the game. I would say all of these guys started out as players for us. So we mm. picked them up from the community. Um, we really saw them as being very big and, and valuable contributors to the, to the DAO. 
and we just promoted them saying like, hey, you deserve a better role. And that's, that's what we want to continue to encourage through the DAO and, and as we build more partnerships in the ecosystem, that we're really making GameFi a career for most people and as a real alternative where you can see a path towards be, really becoming more than just a player clocking in and, and really contributing more and, and being rewarded for that. Yeah, why a DAO for this? So it's an interesting question. I would say for a, for a guild especially, um, it makes a lot of sense because your contributors and your key um, stakeholders aren't just the token holders. You mm -hmm. have players, you have your game partners, uh, you have people within the community that may not be uh, playing games but supporting uh, the community. And I, I, we feel that all of those um, varied stakeholders should have a voice. And mm -hmm. the DAO structure is very aligned with that so mm -hmm. that you, you always take a cue from the whole of your community, not just a specific part of your community, when you make decisions on where we're headed and where we're going and, and what should we do next. Yeah, so what is coming up? What are you excited about? Um, so we're excited about what's coming up in our country expansion. We're also in the midst of um, preparing our own kind of NFT project that has very strong ties to the community and even have some charity elements with regards to these um, underserved communities in the countries we operate in. And we're also incubating a couple of projects that we're launching that is very related to GameFi, but will allow guilds in the future to better scale and better manage their operations. So a lot of stuff going on, and we're hopefully, uh, like, uh, look out over the next couple of months, uh, yeah. we'll be announcing these uh, progressively. So you have your players, you have the community. Are you also developing your own games and environments? At this moment, we're, we're not going into game mm -hmm. development yet. We, we feel that our competitive edge is around management of players, teaching them how to be better. Yeah. And we actually see game partners as, as really long-term um, joint kind of like stakeholders in this space. That makes sense. We, yeah, we, we want to help them scale their community, at the same time um, access our community and help build a game that's very sustainable. So where do you think we're going to be even a, a year to five years from now? A year to five years from now? Um, I, I was uh, talking about this on, on my panel as yeah. well yesterday. Uh, really, we're, we're probably in year one of, of play to earn, and what we're seeing now is we're having this this millions of, of players that have essentially built on chain data um, with regards to their performance, what games they played, and how well they've done in those games. The next phase, I think, is really how would projects use that data to enable really cool stuff for these players. So, in the future, a player will have a re re really long resume of on-chain data about how they perform, mm -hmm. uh, what games they played, and that could become their resume for becoming an esports player or becoming uh, an influencer or something like or that. Or being hired by your DAO or oh, yeah, a network. Yeah, next guild, yeah. Wow. What, how, what about how do NFTs play into all this? So NFTs, other than I guess the gaming um, NFTs used to play the games, um, from our perspective, we're, we're, what we're trying to build is essentially NFTs that are tied to the community mm -hmm. that will allow um, those community members to have a vote in the DAO without having to necessarily own the token. Uh, tokens as DAO vote, voting me mechanisms are, are, not, are somewhat imperfect because mm -hmm. they are li liquid and then subject to yeah, whale, whale games as well, but so, NFTs are not. Yeah, so what would be the incentive to do the NFT versus the token? Like how do you manage both of those and like building the community around each of those? Sure, uh, so from, from the NFT standpoint, what we want to highlight is really around highlighting certain community members. So we mm -hmm. want to pick artists that represent that community so that you're, also, you're representing both the um, player community but also the artist community in that specific country. And at the same time, we want to provide some utility uh, to, the, to the NFT as well uh, via either um, sh um, ongoing kind of share of, of profits um, or even kind of like some, some charity element that we're mm -hmm. kind of just uh, working with partners now at the yeah. moment. And so what about the token? But the token itself will continue to be, I would say as, as, as we bring more and more uh, sub-DAOs into the mix, mm. it will become an index of all those sub-DAOs. Okay. Because the token itself will be what will underpin um, essentially the whole ecosystem. Okay, so uh, can you earn that if, you, if you're part of a player in your network or your DAO? Uh, to, we have right now the ability to earn that, the, the token, if you contribute well and contrib contribute to the community. Um, and, and then if you uh, kind of like level up, I guess, okay, <laughs> within the guild, right. within the DAO. And, and show that you're a valuable contributor, then, then you, of course, part of the rewards is in more, fina more enrichment, either yeah. tokens or even our own tokens. Finally, what advice can you give to those who are entering the space and seeing what you're up to? Sure. I would say the main piece of advice would be just keep an open mind. Yeah. Because the space is so new and just a lot of the stuff is not even written yet. Mm -hmm. And every day there's new projects coming up with really cool stuff. 
and just be, keep it in mind, move quickly when there's new information, try to absorb that and, and adjust your thesis. <laughs> yeah. Um, I know it's hard in this space, but I can, I can say that's what we do and that's a challenge we face every day. But yeah, I mean, just uh, I think explore Gamefly, whether in a guild, on an, in a game, or becoming part of a project, because I think there's lots of cool things that's going to happen in this space in the next two to three years. So where can people find out more to get involved with your DAO? Sure. Um, we are on all the socials, so our Twitter would probably be the main main place. Um, it's at, at PIF underscore DAO, and from there you can find links to our Discord, Telegram, and engage with the community, and we would be happy to have you. Cool. That's it. Awesome. Happy to have you. Psh. Awesome. Amazing. Awesome. Yes, so nice Thank to meet you. you.